Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. In this series of episodes, we're going to be looking at Polish history from a British perspective and also Anglo-Polish relations in a geopolitical context. And I'm delighted to have with me in the studio today Richard Barclay, who is half Polish. He's been living in Poland for 20 years and is able to bring a unique perspective onto this subject. But then because we come to the we come to the Civil War and, and this this very sensitive period mm. where we, of course, had, and France had given this guarantee and, of course, it was called on and we declared war on, 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 on Germany. And lost uh, an empire in the process. Uh, yes, um, that's, which would be the 2nd of September 1939, if my... 3rd of September. Or was it 3rd? Third, third, third. No, it was the 3rd, you're quite right, it's 3rd. And of course, and the, 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 the plan had been, of course, that the, the, the French army would move into... Who were the, into which Western was the biggest Germany, army, Which was actually. the biggest, because apart from a sort of half-hearted... No, we mustn't be nasty about the French. No, 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 no but apart from a half-hearted, <laughs> because it was half-hearted... The Maginot invasion, Line. <laughs> invasion of the Tsarland for about three days until uh, they gave up. Yeah. Um, then, uh, they then were scared. They, they were s- scared. You see, I mean, the thing about the French was they were still in shell shock from the First World War. They had not recovered. Despite having the Maginot and despite having the biggest army. Despite having the biggest army and uh, despite actually being the most warlike nation on the yeah. European continent, they were, they were, the French were always the threat. They were the first, you know, yeah. they were the most militarised people. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, uh, and, until Bismarck, you know, knocked the hell out of them in 1870. Uh, but even that, you know, instilled in them a real I mean, fear. There is, and now we know that, in fact, when Hitler invaded the, the Rhineland, his own general said, we cannot possibly beat the French, this is madness. Madness. And Hitler just said, don't worry, Do they, won't, they won't attack. No, they won't attack. And he was right. his bluff and his bluff, and I think his, his first bluff was called and lost when he did never expect the United Kingdom to declare war in September 1939. And uh, he didn't want it to happen. No, he didn't want it to happen but, either. But England had no choice. Well, at that, that point, point, we had no choice. No and of choice. Course, then we entered, which is really a good example, I think, of this sort of Anglo-Polish sort of this sort of mutual misunderstanding. Oh. We entered this period which we call the phony war because between September 1939 and the, and the Battle of Britain not much happened. Whereas, of course, for that six-week period in Poland, you have complete and utter horrific destruction. And they horrific were fantastic. Warfare. They were fantastic. Um, Poles, brave, fighting on two fronts. Exactly. And then, of course, on the 17th of September, the uh, the Russians yeah. um, in, in, invaded. And I mean, I want, I'm reading a book at the moment, um, Timothy Snyder's Bloodlands. Oh, yes. And I just read before that Roger Morehouse's, which is an excellent book, A First to Fight, which looks at this war and says, look, from an Anglo historical perspective, we, we talk about a phony war. But there's there's nothing, very nothing, real nothing phony for the people of Poland. And it, what I think is particularly shocking when you read this book is it was, you know, we, 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 we sort of believe or half believe from history that the, the SS were nasty people, but the Wehrmacht was full of honourable soldiers. And you read this book and you realise that in actual fact the Wehrmacht was as beastly as everybody else. Of course it and was. this deliberate bombing of civilians, this deliberate killing of civilians, of course, of course. which had no military purpose. Yeah. Well, um, you might say that it, about Dresden quite as well, but... So you can understand, I think, why uh, today, since we're, you know, Poles look at this period and think, well, they were let down by the British and the French. Yes, but the thing is that, that you, you see what, and I've had this discussion so many times, they don't, they don't take into account the fact that Britain had been disarming. Britain sent its expeditionary force. That was the British Army. Well, you know. I think that's the other point. But, you know, we, by continental European standards, we'd always focused on the navy and it had a very exactly. small army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, I, you know, if we're looking at, at sort of, if I had, if the roles had been reversed, yes. the first thing I would have said to Poland is, "Thank you for this guarantee. Where's your navy?" Yeah. And I wonder whether Beck and these other people thought about saying to the British, "Thank you for the guarantee. Where's your army?" Because the reality is that the French did have a big army, and that was the French, expected. The, the French in action. It was the, the high command of the French that really lost the war. Because it, with all and the... if, they'd, if they'd hit, if they they could have taken Berlin uh, when, very... when Hitler was invading Poland. Exactly. They That's, could have, they they, could they, have they, taken they, it, and this... they didn't. No, because they sort of gave... and then of course they, once that had been, and we had the. Russian invasion, once Poland had sort of been neutralised, if I can use that word, yeah. then of course the Germans were then free to re- turn round and, and drive through, drive through one... Um, well, of course, they hadn't learned Western from history, Europe. had they? Because, I mean, you know, they would have... I mean, you know, Stalingrad and all these places, I mean, just the, 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 the catastrophic management of that. But of course, then, of course, we get to the Battle of Britain, which, of course, is for most of our, in, in our popular imagination, mm. in, 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 uh, as, um, as Britons, of course, we, have, we always think of these dashing Polish pilots. Yes, and they were all very young, and you know why? They were very young and they didn't live very long because they were all very, very young. And, and the, 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 the ideal age for, a, for a, a, a pilot was 19. Why? Because they didn't think it was going to be them that got hit. Exactly. You know, you, 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 uh, if, you can, if you can cast your mind back to when you were 19, 
You know, I remember I used, to, I used to have this wonderful Italian sports car. It was a Lancia Flavia. Uh, and it had one really bad habit. It can do 120 miles an hour beautifully, but it didn't stop always. You put your foot on the pedal and the bloody thing, you know, didn't respond sometimes. And one took that risk. And so I understand these 19-year-olds, you know, the 20-year-olds. And, of course, the Poles had fly because of this this period of, of, of total war that they'd come from, the Poles had a, you know, experience of flying. And there's that wonderful scene, isn't there, in the Battle of the, no, the, the film, film, the film, where the chaps say, keep formation, keep formation, chaps, and, and the Poles are going, you know, scatter! You know? Exactly. <laughs> and they've all gone. I mean, that's absolutely brilliant, and because they knew, they, and this is, you know, they, they hugely influenced the thinking in the RAF, uh, 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 those big, uh, you know, the dogfights and all the rest of it, you know, it was, really, came from, really came from them. Um, but um, the... the uh, uh, the other thing is, you know, where did where did where did Hitler's officer class come from? They came from they came from the Junkers, and where was Junkerland? Junkerland was, was East Prussia, was which East Prussia. was essentially um, yes, which, this part of the world, Poland, exactly, yes. where you had German landowners and Polish peasants, basically, which is which is you know which is interesting. And of course, then of course the war took its course, as we all know, and, and then we had the post-war settlement, which of course, a lot of people here in this part of the world think that the the, the, the Western Allies let down Poland at Yalta. Well, of course they don't. Which want... certain, but of course, I think the point is, which is why Churchill had developed this soft underbelly of Irish Yugoslavia, because he wanted yeah. Allied troops as far east as possible when yeah, the yeah. final whistle went. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Yalta was too late because it had always been Stalin's view that you know, wherever the Red Army was when we decided to stop fighting. Them,